Hello again, this is Ant-Man to Enable. I'm going to bring you a book review. This book I got a couple of weeks ago, I've been reading through it. Fighting Fit by Adrian Wheel. Wheel, I suppose that's how you say his name. Uh, just on the back here, uh, it talks about fitness and fighting fit, particularly in the military situation. In the introduction here he says he was an intelligence officer in the British Army and was part of operations with Special Air Service, Special Boat Service, Commandos and others. And from his experience, he's uh, been able to write this book in achieving your physical fitness. Fitness is mostly to do with cardiovascular and strength training, endurance and strength training. So not so much into bodybuilding or specific fitness strength for particular sports or something like that. But as he mentions in here, once you are fit, genuinely fit, well then it's good for your health, not only for your health, but also for many other activities that you do. This edition here was um, actually copyrighted in 1993, but published in 1995, and this edition is a 2012 edition. And a quick look through the contents here. We have basic material, just some basics about your body, height and weight, and just an assessment of how fit you are. Some basic training to do with endurance versus power training. Uh, some basic warm-ups. The basic 22 exercises that you can do. Chest exercises, back, shoulders, arms, abdominals, running, swimming, cycling. Combined training, so interval training. Fartlek, I suppose that's how you pronounce it. It's actually a Swedish word as introduced some machine workouts like um, circuit training using weights and then aerobic super circuits a good introduction to do with food and give some recipes and for breakfast lunch and so on for dinner for evening meals and even give some shopping lists some food to buy so you can make up your own recipes and try and stick to it rather than eating too much uh, junk food then it gets into the actual training programs so putting it together some lifestyle factors first basic program is desk driver program so for the genuinely non-fit people who work at a desk or something like that just to get some basic fitness happening you can then move up to the semi-pro program and then into the fighting fit program which then moves on if you are in the military going for SAS selection you then do the SAS program and here's a so a different program which covers the um, parachute regiment, parachute company and commando training. So depending which course has slightly different emphasis. So let's have a look inside the book now. Some introduction, uh, a couple of cartoons. There's a particular style of writing which is quite easy and a little bit humorous. So it makes it good for reading even though it covers a lot of good topics. And there's a lot of information here for sure, you have to read carefully through it. So a little bit about your muscle, skeleton, some um, basic names of body parts and muscles, if you need to know that. How much do you weigh? Height weight chart. I've always had a little bit of controversy here. That always seem to be a little bit more heavier than what these height weight charts say, but uh, never mind. Uh, has one for women as well. Uh, so I mentioned that smoking, alcohol, using drugs, that sort of thing, medical factors, and is a basic way of seeing how your resting heart rate. I tried this and I'm between 70 and 80. 70 and 80 here, so I'm between average and fit, which is not too bad for an older guy like I am. But a better way of showing is doing the step test. When I was in the military, we would do this step test from time to time just to check our heart rate, number of heartbeats, and women actually have slightly higher heart rates than men, so a good way, easy way to check your heart rate. Some mentions about just some basic clothes to wear, you don't need special clothes other than maybe buying some uh, good pair of running shoes, but apart from that, that's shoes. Uh, mentions about aerobic and anaerobic. Aerobic means with air and anaerobic means uh, like sprinting and not really using breathing as such. Power training, 
and just achieving a balance between cardiovascular endurance and strength training as he mentions here strength in your back and shoulders compared to your running so some basic warm-ups uh, swivel your head swivel your shoulders and your arms do some basic stretches and then we're in to go for uh, he mentions again some gear for training um, a little humorous thing about some bodybuilders in the thing so exercise you do some push-ups push-ups bench press these are basic exercises dips dips are definitely good and he mentions here you should be able to do um, 20 to 40 push-ups at a time bench presses do about 20 obviously you select the weight for you can uh, for dips uh, these are quite difficult to do at first they sure are but practice and practice and try and do up to 20 at a time which I find quite difficult to do at the moment lateral raises doing about 20 a lot of times when I used to be at the gym before the 8 to 10 reps was the common thing to do and about three sets four sets something like that but um, he's talking about using a weight that allows you to do 20 repetitions and then you could do a second set or third set something like that pullovers try and do up to 20 again I think this is helping to build your muscle endurance for chin-ups try and do at least 12 I used to be able to do 12 or more without much trouble now I'm a bit older I have trouble doing oh on a good day I could do 10 so that's a, that's pretty good actually so some back stretches, bend over rowing, shoulder press, uh, common exercises, dumbbell, side lateral raise. These exercises here, these ones here is what I do with my resistance bands. Quite okay to do. I can do this one, resistance bands, uh, resistance bands. In bench press, I can lie down and shorten up the bands and do some bench press ones. Can't do dips, of course. So my resistance bands come in quite handy uh, with these exercises. So uh, some curls for your biceps, so some, some tricep dips you can just do off a chair or something like that and go at home. Some more biceps, pull downs, abdomen gives one, two, three, four, five abdomen exercises. So building your abdomen strength is quite important. Normally I just do a few sit-ups but uh, recently I've started adding in some leg raises, leg crunches as well for a bit of variation and also to help build my abdominals a bit. So mentions about running and foot strikes, some information about that, distance, how far you should run. Interesting point here he mentions rather than working out how far we run, like you want to run three kilometers, five kilometers, he said we should run for at least 30 minutes at a time so as we get fitter, we can get faster and we're actually covering more distance if we just measure our 30 minutes for the time. He suggests that's a better way of um, working out what we do for running rather than just running a set distance every time. He mentions a short fast run, different types of run, basic run, endurance builder. We can also do swimming, uh, do pyramids, you can do pyramid swimming, if you know about pyramids in your exercise training, you just do one, then you come back and do two, so you can do pyramid training for push-ups, say, do one push-up, then do two push-ups, then do three push-ups, right up to, say, eights, then seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. If you ever tried pyramid training before, you realise just how uh, much stamina you really need, how difficult it is. So, some interval swimming, eating and drinking, Cycling, cycling is definitely a good thing as an alternative to running. Mention some cycling, walking, a little bit of aerobics, combining the training now. Uh, mentions the fart leg, which we'll get to in a minute. Here's about fart leg running. So it's a way of running over 30 minutes where you do a jogging, then you do a full pace run. At two minutes and do a two minutes at a normal run and 30 seconds at a 100% pace 30 seconds back to a slow jog and two minutes at 80% running one minute down here walking then two minutes normal pace so you're varying your speed of where you're running over 30 minutes I haven't really tried this as a full 30 minutes yet 
but I realised just how difficult it is to do a sprint, fast run, then slow down to a jog, and then to a walk, try and catch my breath back, and back up to a jog, fast pace. Uh, a very good activity for uh, building your breathing, your cardiovascular, for sure. Machine workout, so using some of the exercise we've just shown on a machine in a gym, say, give some basic things here, press-ups, 25 press-ups, 20 bench press, 20 dips, 20, 12 chins. Yeah, just a suggestion, you can vary it a little bit with some of the other exercises. Aerobic super circuits. If you've ever tried at super circuits, I have done some in the past. It definitely will test your strength and stamina and also your mental strength as well to be able to keep going. Now the interesting part into the food. And Brickley, Brickley mentions the three three types of food, your carbs, carbohydrates, your fats, your proteins. Um, fats, fats here containing biscuits, cakes, chocolates, mayonnaise, french fries. Another article I was talking about food. These are referred to as um, empty, empty calories, empty fats, because there's no real goodness in them other than the sugar and fat that's involved. And we shouldn't be eating too much of this. We're referred to as empty calories, though fats, fats of different types is definitely important to us. There's about nine calories per gram of fat, four calories of carbs per fat, and four calories of protein in uh, one gram of protein. Or in kilojoules, some people will measure in kilojoules, there's about four kilojoules to a calorie. I think it mentions here, oh, we should be eating about 2,000 calories a day, or 2,500, depending on which article you look at, which is about the 8,000 kilojoules, so uh, that's for a reasonably active person. Here he says you don't need to keep measuring kilojoules and calories, but sticking to a good diet is one thing you need to do. At the first look, there didn't seem to be enough food for such an active lifestyle in some of this, uh, the recipes here, but looking through it a bit more carefully, you might find that we actually eat too much food during the day and we should be coming back and the type of food we eat. So breakfast is just basic, uh, high fibre cereal, some milk, uh, yoghurt, a uh, little bit of toast, uh, some things like that, only once a week. Allowed to have the big breakfast with the bacon, eggs, tomatoes type thing. Uh, it gives a selection of lunches we can have, normally sandwiches, salads, um, some things like that, now baked potatoes. Um, so tends to have a smallish type lunch and a larger evening meal. I, I tend at the moment to have a larger lunch and smaller evening meal. I don't know if it makes a lot of difference. So it's um, plenty of uh, vegetables and st steaming or stir-frying vegetables. Uh, it gives a suggestion of salads, It'd be interesting to eat. And uh, oil-free dressing, I haven't tried this yet, but I think it should be interesting. Some apple juice, vinegar, some mustard, tarragon, salt and pepper. So I might try that, make that up and have it as a salad dressing. Here's a su suggested shopping list for week one. So that's all your food you would eat for week one. Then for the evening meal, so you could have a shepherd pie, grilled lamb steaks, pasta, uh, salmon, turkey, lemon chicken. So it all sounds pretty good. And here's a chart here. Oh, I'm just here laid out, so pretty good. Shopping list for week two. Some suggested beef stew with mushrooms and wine, kebabs, pork. Uh, pizza, make your own pizza rather than uh, buying one. Uh, ro some roast chicken and a laid out here, it's pretty good. Special supplements, he doesn't actually recommend here using any protein supplements for the same reason you don't use the vitamin supplements up here because a uh, healthy balanced diet you don't really need them and excess protein goes the way of excess vitamins down the drain so you just excrete it out of your body. Though protein supplements do help bodybuilders and some particular training for some certain activities. So there are reasons, but not for this type of training. So vitamin supplements uh, may be useful, but you don't need them if you've got a good diet, eating good quality food. So most excess vitamins, it says here, are generally speaking, extruded in the urine, and most certainly you're pouring money down the drain. Replacement drinks, 
I found these replacement drinks to be quite useful and boosting. So Gatorade, Lucasade, Sports, Dexter's type drinks, whatever those brand names are. And um, so it does add a bit of taste to the water and I think the very small amounts of minerals in there, minerals and salts in there do help boost your body when you're sweating a lot and doing some running training so that's good so here we go into the training programs some lifestyle factors uh, drinking cut down on your smoking for sure if you're into smoking so I'm setting some goals so let's try into the home workout just some basic warm-ups at home if you're not very fit so some warm-ups doing some press-ups push-ups so you try and do your 20 reps, probably you can't even do them. So some crunches, leg presses, V, tricep dips, uh, leg raises, so you can warm down. So just some basic jogging, little home workout, jog, home workout, day off. To play some sport, he recommends playing some, so you can play badminton, volleyball, some basketball, something, just to keep you moving around. Suggested swimming or jogging if you've got access to a pool. I don't really have access to a pool here, but I'd like to have swimming occasionally. Um, Semi-pro program, here we go. So you've covered the first one, you've started to get your fitness up a little bit. The semi-pro one. Here we go, still some jogging. Swimming, jogging, swimming. In the second week, exercise class, some swimming. Exercise class, so it's not too difficult, but the thing is it's every day, you only get one day off, 90 minutes of sport. 30 minutes swimming, if you did 30 minutes of swimming you'd be getting pretty fit for sure. And then into the fighting fit program, goes over four weeks, actually a couple of months. But uh, So you've done the first program, into the second program, now into the fighting fit one. Uh, starts off a bit easy, so we still have a run, a swim, play some sport, and now we start doing some exercising, pyramids, Super circuits, multi gym circuits, uh, long run, one hour for a long run. Second month, more exercise. Third month, fourth month, and by all means, you need to be mentally keep yourself going to keep going for four months get, to get yourself up to being uh, pretty fit like you can here. Interval workouts, four by 800, 800 meters, super circuits, exercising up to twice a day, some days swim, basic running. Mention some brief uh, about injuries here and just to be aware of what's happening. Uh, some about heat exhaustion, I've had that before, it's uh, not a fun thing, you just need to keep aware of your water that's for sure. Keep drinking water and um, hypothermia, getting cold, some basic first aid, the splints, anti-diarrhea tablets, uh, painkillers, now, come to the outdoors. So this is more in the military orientation where we need to do some backpack work. So what sort of boots are using a So sorry about that, the battery went flat. But I've seen that happen on a couple of videos, so now it's happened to me. I didn't realise this video was taking quite so long. So here we are, back to discussion of boots, some rucksacks. Uh, what you might choose uh, clothing wise, you should be wearing on your hill work and coming into walking the hills. So, it talks about some hills, the safety rules, using maps, scale. Uh, if you haven't already used a map, by all means, get into learning it. Interesting grid references and so on. Uh, using a compass, compass deviations from the grid to magnetic, and how to take a bearing. Walking cross country, walking in rivers and streams, being aware of the weather, uh, night time, some navigation night time, uh, so basic survival kit, as we should all know, um, small pocket knife, paracord, torch, so a lighter of some sort, emergency food, water, some other kit, survival techniques, and, about. and here we come to the military part of the fitness selection so whether you're going for SAS, P Company, Parachute Regiment or in the Commandos how you should prepare yourself physically and mentally of course some motivation 
to actually keep it going because it's going to be difficult for sure and your lifestyle in the military is uh, difficult enough and some things about endurance so running swimming cycling gym work bergen or backpack workouts and in particular about using a bergen it's a british call it a uh, backpack so and the famous fan dance if you're aware of british sas to do that fan dance the penny fan penny y fan nickname and had a yeah, you should uh, try and practice with the partner and here we go here's the um, selection program for the first month so running Bergen workout 45 minutes no weight just uh, no running interestingly second week get up to 15 pounds in your backpack no running no running 20 pounds and then just to run in the fourth week so swimming multi gym circuit as you covered earlier in the book and two workouts per day swim multi gym circuit one hour bike ride running in the hills bike rides get a day off bergen workout 20 pounds so no running again and this goes over into the second month the third and four months so four months preparation on top of the other fitness work you've done just to give yourself a chance to pass a selection course so very very difficult and just give you some things about P Company if you're training for the paras which you might like to do so they're a little bit different they train for speed and particularly for upper body strength that mentions here and this work of tabbing which is working uh, marching f fast marching fast walking with the packs and on as a group and particularly for the paras Gives you an idea of a workout there over four weeks. Villa for Paris, so of course you could incorporate from the selection workout as well. The commandos. Uh, commandos have a certain emphasis as well. And you see here special features are uh, upper body strength and physical agility. So rope climbing, assault courses, things like that. Commandos are a bit more emphasis into something like that and some basic things you need to be able to do 50 sit-ups in two minutes five pull-ups basic fitness tests swimming and is a slightly modified course if you're trying to get in the commandos so all in all a great book about fitness health and your body and um, i can highly recommend it i've started to modify my own fitness program to incorporate some of these things and it's an interesting book to keep you focused and your fitness and a healthy lifestyle of food and those types of things so um well recommended fighting fit by adrian well this is ant man twin unable thanks for watching happy to leave a comment or subscribe if you like